we liked this car we drove it before. We did. We, we still like, like it. Yeah, it's still great. good, but it's changed a little. You think so? Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Well, ma mainly in styling and interior stuff. The one we had before of the Genesis G70 was rear-wheel drive. This oh, one yeah. is all-wheel drive. That's very true. It is the G70 3.3 all-wheel drive turbo. Mm -hmm. It's the 2022, the refresh, yes, the it newer is. car. New styling, yep. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast. This is Everyday Driver. This has the 3.3 liter twin turbo engine. They're little tiny turbos on each side. Mm -hmm. And this thing makes so much power. I forgot how much power this yeah, car makes. Yeah, it's the same engine that, that's been in it, it before, but also is in the Stinger. You're not afraid of getting through traffic. You're not mm -hmm. afraid of slicing and dicing. Mm -hmm. And then you'll look down and kind of realize, ooh, <laughs> you need to, need to back <laughs> off a little bit. Look at me going quick, yeah. It's brilliant. Same 365 horsepower, 376 pound-feet of torque mm -hmm. engine. It's brilliant. It's fun to drive. And it strikes me every time I get in this car that it's a little bit Mercedes AMG. It's a little bit of that flavor okay. for right. so much yeah. less money. Yeah, okay. What's interesting is that if you're talking about straight line speed, zero to 60, yeah. most of the other players here, the Mercedes C-Class, the BMW, the Audi, the German competitors, yeah. are actually a little bit faster zero to 60. Sure. But interestingly enough, they aren't faster in the mid-range. Okay. okay, okay, so that, I like that. So if you're just talking about a straight line blast, this is just under five seconds. Those are running like four and a half, okay? So if you're talking... You paid a lot 60, more money for that You paid a extra lot more money. Second. Yes, you did. But as far as usable power, this is yeah. right there mid-pack. And what's surprising to what you've already said is that any time you need power, it's just ready. It just goes. It is. Yeah. So this is the all-wheel drive, and you might think it would deaden the steering. Mm. It's lively. It's not like there's a lot of road feel, but it makes the car lively because of that initial turn in. Yeah. And then through corners like these, it makes you want to add throttle because the power is there. And then uh -huh. suddenly you're going even faster than the corner. Yep. And then, yeah, you can tell it downshifts just a titch, uh -huh. just a little bit. And then the turbos come on boost. So you go through the corner actually faster than you, you intended, but it's great. I'm so surprised yeah. at how eager this turns in. There's just a little bit of a dead spot and then the car just whips through the corner. I was worried about the all-wheel drive system kind of muting it as well, and yeah. it really doesn't. It really it, doesn't. It, it, it's like no consequence all-wheel drive. How often know? do you find that on all-wheel drive cars? It's rarely. a bit of a rare thing. Very yes. rarely, yes. I mean, if you go with the BMW 3 Series, the rear-wheel drive is significantly more interesting to drive than the, the all-wheel drive version. The all-wheel sure. drive version definitely needs it. Sure. Of course, Audi's all-wheel drive all the time and front-wheel drive architecture. Yep. So we've got different animals and ways to try, to try to do this, but I am surprised because I feel like this is every bit as fun to drive as the rear-wheel drive version. Yeah. But if you're a person wanting all-wheel drive, which we can debate whether or not that's necessary, if you're wanting all-wheel drive, you get that benefit. It also yes. can save you if you get a little crazy. <laughs> you know, because, like that. because the back end will happily start to come around. Yes. You can turn it up to Sport Plus mode. Sport Plus mode is new, by the way. It didn't exist prior, but in true, the refresh, true. given all of the models, not just the upper-level trim like this, all of the models have Sport Plus mode, which dials back the traction control. Yes. So it will get the back out, yeah. but you could save yourself because the front wheels were actually trying to go straight. Yeah. So this has gained that ability. It's very interesting. Yeah, I've dug into what uh, the all-wheel drive split is mm. per the, the drive modes here, which are down here right behind the shifter. And it's my understanding that comfort is about a 50-50 split. Eco throws up to 40% to the front, but then when you're in sport, you're up to about 20% in the front, 80% okay. rear. Okay. But then Sport Plus, as you said, dials back the traction control. It makes yep. the holes in the safety net just a little bit yep. bigger. Yep. It's, it's great. still there, but it's almost like suddenly a rear wheel drive fun sports sedan. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the more mature, older Subaru WRX buyer has discovered their car. So you're looking for that fun, usable, mm -hmm. family, commute, comfortable, but the next generation of luxury, and you're not wanting to go German yet, so you're a WRX buyer, and mm. you're ready to spend mm. a little bit more. But what out there is all-wheel drive fun sports sedan? There's not many. There's a few. Very few, yeah. But here is one for under $50,000. That is key. This is, is not really the premium key. version. This no. is the sport version, so sure. it's $49,525. So it just means you don't get the Brembos, you don't get adaptive suspension, 
but okay. Yeah. It's not like the brakes are weak on this. And it's not like it They're doesn't handle well. And I exactly. also think there's an extra $4,300 package on this that I don't even think it needs. So you could get this yeah. car in all-wheel drive with the good engine and it has excellent dynamics for $45,000. And I don't think that can compelling. touch it with any of the German competitors. You can't touch this feeling from Audi, BMW, or Mercedes for anywhere close to that price. Agreed. Agreed. Eight-speed automatic transmission. Mm -hmm. And... It's not quite doing the dual clutch kind of feel, no. but it's very crisp, very sporty. Their in-house eight-speed has been great in everything we've had it in. Yeah. We keep talking yeah. about how it's really good. They aren't using the same ZF that everybody else in the world is using. They've tuned True. their own version, and it's surprisingly good. You'll notice on the tack, when you wind it out, mm -hmm. the numbers at each that? thousand increment, they get larger as the needle yep. winds past. Yep. So let's go to sport. Drop a couple gears. It sounds good. It does. It gets much more aggressive. And the numbers draws. get yep. bigger. It's very funny. It's a little the number entertaining. That it rolls thing. by is always the biggest number on yeah. the tag, which is really cool. That's very fun. It's little surprise and delight kind of features. I actually have stuff to say about the styling before I change seats. Do you? Go. I do. Go, go. This is the big thing that I'm going to say that I think you're going to disagree with. Okay. I like the prior version better. I know that Genesis is very excited okay. about the refresh and they want to make the front end of the G70 match the rest of the lineup. I get it. They've got the, the two strakes of lighting that go back with the big shield grill. Yes. I don't mind the big shield grill. I prefer the front end prior on the G70 to this one, even though I know this okay. is the corporate look. This feels to me like another one of those examples of we have to make everything match the corporate look. And I kind of want every car maker to have a naysayer in the... in the. You want a black just, sheet from I just want, every car manufacturer. I just want everybody to have a person in the design department that gets to be able to say, can this one be the exception? Because Funny. I don't think that the exact same front end has to be on every car of every car maker. I know this is Genesis' new look, and I'm not saying it's a bad look. I think it looks really good on the GV80, for example. Yeah, true. I think the prior version looked better on this. I think there have to be exceptions, and I wish this car was an exception. Hmm. They've also done hmm. other little tweaks. They have the new larger, like, 10.3-inch screen now. 14 color options on this car. Yeah. And I think they gave us the worst one. What's the name? It's it's um, it's Siberian, Siberian ice. Siberian ice. It's it's Genesis attempt to do Porsche chalk. <laughs> That's the attempt. Yeah. But it has a little bit of blue in it, and it looks a little bit off in a lot of lighting colors. It looks just a little bit not right. It looks a little dirty. Yeah. Not quite right. I'm glad that you're noticing the styling and liking the old one better. Even though I like that this one actually looks more expensive. And I'll tell you why. Now, look at all the shapes around the car. There's softened radiuses. There's large radiuses on the interior and exterior. So when you see a nice mm -hmm. line, there's a, a large radius at the end of that line, wherever you're looking. So the openings on the front, except for one key detail, it's the point at the dead mm -hmm. bottom center that makes that grill look like a diamond. Mm -hmm. If it were very softened, it would be an amorphous shape. It wouldn't be quite so defined. I actually like that grill better. Oh, I don't do? like the lights better. I like the okay. grill better. So it makes your eye go right mm -hmm. to that point and it makes it a very clear Genesis definition. Mm -hmm. But the lights, the, it still is that two line kind mm -hmm. of look. That's their new thing. And you follow your eye all the way around. The hood detail is beautiful. The sculptured shoulder makes this nice negative surface so you have a, a nice shadow underneath on the on the shoulder line and it wraps around to the rear where you will see Bentley elliptical exhausts you're right that's you're why right. it looks more expensive Bentley established this as the very beautiful thin elongated ellipse mm -hmm. for its exhaust mm -hmm. whether the tailpipe behind it is real or not they have established that as an expensive Bentley look mm, interesting point. look at this car in a 45 49 thousand dollar car what does that tell your eye? Oh, mm -hmm. that's a more expensive mm -hmm. car. Little details all the way around. And then here in the interior, you get machine turn finish. It's not actually machine turn, but it looks like it. <laughs> it looks it. It looks it. And it looks Doesn't beautiful. Feel it. looks good in here, yeah. It, there's nothing too shiny, so it looks a lot like a watch band. It looks mm. very subtle and refined and sophisticated yeah, yeah. with just the nicest touch of red sport seat belts. You know, Porsche mm -hmm. can get away with it. And the pin striping in the seats. If you go up to the premium version, you get the quilted pa panels. Yep. And the quilted yep. seats, which what we had before, yeah. are fine and they're yeah, nice, nice. But it's not necessary. But when you sit in here without it, you go, okay. This is the sporty version. I'm, I'm letting it be sporty. The stitching, red stitching everywhere, just the subtle touches. It feels very restrained but sporty. And all these little things make it feel more expensive than it is. And I'm proud of Genesis for mm. doing that. 
I love this car. I want to keep recommending this car. And styling, of course, eye of the beholder. But if you like this now more surface with shape kind of styling instead of hard edge mm, line, that's okay. where they're going with their cars. I think it's beautiful. You All must right. drive this thing. Yep, ready to swap. I kind of wish you were kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. There's a Super Outback pulling it behind us oh, to goody. probably try to ruin everything. Anyway, okay. After driving this for a bit mm -hmm. and concluding how much I liked it, and I'm looking forward to driving it and talking to you about it, I started to think about who would I put this against? Who are the, What's the competition? Okay. And would I buy this instead of the competition? I started thinking about it in those terms. That's a good way of thinking about it, yeah. And I want to talk about the Germans and a lot of other things, but I want to bring up one car we've driven recently, which is the Acura TLX Type S. Glad you brought that up. S very similar power, very similar alt thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's mm -hmm. not the German, it's the alt thinking. The reason I want to bring yeah. it up here very quickly is because the Genesis G70, the main issue I have with it, is terrible backseat space. Yeah. I looked it up. This has just as bad rear seats as the Acura TLX. We've noted that since the beginning. We've never liked the Genesis yes. G70 rear seat space. But this, I, I have ranted, admittedly ranted, yeah. about the bad back seat space in the TLX. This is every bit as bad. The difference is, I feel more comfortable in the front. Yeah. The, the TLX still feels like I don't have quite enough space in the front. This feels fantastic in the front. It feels luxurious Agreed. in the front. Agreed, yes. And if you're not trees like we are, you can move these seats up a little bit and you can actually gain enough usable back seat space. If you're a big guy... Did you see the switch right enough. here to move the seats for My son used the switch. Oh, good. Well, my wife sat in the driver's seat. Or I'm sure the she, passenger was, seat. she was thrilled and She by wondered that. what was going on. But then, because, it's so she's, cool. because she's 5'6", she was able to slide forward enough that he was yeah. perfectly comfortable in the back. He's almost as big as she is now. So they were able to make it it's work a nice without feature. a problem. But yeah. unless you go like but a this full thing size, just takes off. <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm always surprised. It's, anyway. It moves. Unless you're getting a midsize, like an E-Class or a 5 Series mm -hmm. or larger, the backseat space is never really going to be amazing. It's never great. There's always a compromise, even on A4s and C-Classes. Yes. CLAs, they're never going to be great. Never great. Uh, okay. But I think the A4 and the C-Class and the 3 Series, all of those, in fact, the Alpha Julia, all of those have better back seat space than this G70 does. Mm -hmm. It depends on your usage. It depends on how big your drivers are. All of these are major factors. Because then I started to think about which would I prefer to drive, this or those Germans or the Acura TLX. Okay. And I really like the way the TLX Type S drives. It's 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 a phenomenal car to drive. Are you leaving price aside? To I decide? am leaving price aside initially. Okay. 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 All right. But I actually think I enjoy this more than the TLX because this feels more playful. The TLX feels incredibly competent. Yes. And when I drive it, yes. I'm incredibly impressed by how well it works. The super handling all-wheel drive is good. Sure. But this is rear drive biased and it has a more playful character than the TLX. And I also think, short of the Alpha Julia, it is the most playful, interesting car to drive in the entire market segment. The Julia is the only one that I think is possibly better to dr just drive, but this is nicer to be in. Yeah, yeah. And I think this in all-wheel drive is more compelling than the Julia is in all-wheel drive. The Julia is at its sweet spot in rear-wheel drive. But the Julia is almost you know, mid forties, whereas this is so comparable in price. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little bit more, you're paying 49. Yep. But this has twin turbos. This has a lot more power than the Julia at the similar price point. You have to go to the Quadrifolio to get much yes. more power, and then yes. you blow this out. Of you course, blow this out, of but course, still. but then you're paying 80, close to 80 grand for it. Close to, yep. This feels, it just moves. Yeah, that's partial throttle. It sounds great. Off it goes, yep. I mean, this has the genuine feeling of speed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When you took off, that just feels fast. And that was partial throttle, and you hear the, the turbos blowing, and everything gets really yeah. excitable. It's just a genuinely fun car to drive. But again, I can dial it back to comfort. By the way, the seats release you. Yeah, that's true. The bolsters <laughs> go... Which was a BMW thing 20 yes. years ago. It was yes. this novelty thing, mm -hmm. and now here's a $49,000 car the seats, doing the same thing. The seats ease up. That you was just a, get into cruise. Mode. That was an M5 91 thousand yeah. dollar yeah, yeah, yeah. cool thing, mm -hmm. and now here's Genesis doing the exact same squeeze. And here I am in yeah. just cruise mode, and it's comfortable. It, a lot of times when you have a sports sedan, sports car is the same way. That is really fun to drive. When you put it in its less aggressive modes, it doesn't get nice enough. 
Sure. This doesn't get sure. sloppy. It doesn't get like, you know, I'm in a Volkswagen Phaeton or an S-Class Cruiser. It doesn't get that. Sloppy. It doesn't get that. Okay? Yeah. And it doesn't get, like, super smooth. Right. But it doesn't feel like, oh, there's just never a setting that doesn't beat me up. And a lot of sports sedans, if they have a sporty feel, yeah. they never get calm enough if you want to just chill. Hmm. And this does both pretty well. A lot of times BMWs have this issue of late. If you get it with the really good dynamics, yeah. it never rides good enough. It can handle really well, but not ride really well. This can ride really well, and then I can go back to Sport Plus and take off and laugh for a while. Well, that's just it. This yeah. does not have the adaptive suspension. Isn't that interesting? Yes. It is straight up just one setting. So to get that compromise right, that's magic. I. Yeah, it's harder That's to do. It's a lot much harder of effort to, yep. to get that balance between when you set it to comfort, the suspension feels the same. You can tell. Mm. But there's that still that underlying fun, I'm compliant, but there's still that fun kind of thing. But then when you dial it up to Sport Plus, yep. well, it comes to life. And the suspension has not changed. Yes, you're right. I mean, you could pay more to get the adaptive suspension in this. And that even gives you more opportunity. But they have really found a sweet spot here it's that just amaz amazes me to be just Fantastic. all around her. Yeah. Now, these cars start at 37 and change. Mm -hmm. You have your engine options. But I feel like this particular one isn't the fully loaded one, and it's not the base engine. This is a magical sweet spot mm -hmm. for sports sedans in general. Of course, you don't get a manual transmission where nobody was buying them, and everybody kind of prefers the paddles. When you're hustling through this, through corners like these, Paddles are great. They were offering, and it responds brilliantly. It does respond well. They were offering a manual with the two-liter smaller engine, which was the first mistake because I think it would have been more interesting with this big engine. But they were selling like a hundred, like that, nationwide, that is like a hundred. Not 100. enough to justify so two liter costs in assembly. Absolutely not for a manual. But if you think about everything else in this lineup, the BMW is the only place where you might be able to spec it just perfectly and walk away with a manual. Everybody else sure. isn't offering one. And you're going to pay through the nose for you're that You're going to pay a lot. And, and, and it's that mix and match thing that happens when you start to chase the manual in most manufacturers. Yeah. So this, you don't lose anything here by having it only be an auto. Pretty much the whole market section sure. is only an auto. The Julia, which we love and wish we had here in a manual, doesn't come in a manual, only yeah. an auto. Yeah. So, okay, let's just ac accept that that's this market segment. They've got a good transmission that is their own, that responds yep. really well. You put it in Sport Plus, it gets quite aggressive in upshift and downshift. It gets very aggressive. You've got a much more aggressive exhaust note. It flies. You just you're, you breathe on it with yeah. your right foot, and it's like, okay, let's go. I can't Phenomenal. get over the playfulness, the easy rotation, and the fact that they have just balanced this car really well to be the fun one in the marketplace. The only choice I would make over this is the Julia, but if I were doing an alt choice from the Germans, I think it would probably be most likely between this and the TLX. Because okay. the Julia yeah. is, a, is, a, is a niche car. You have to really want that car, and I do, but yeah. most people don't want that car. Yeah, for sure. If you for want sure. a non-German good sports sedan, it's this or the TLX, and this is more playful, and the TLX is more kind of focused. It feels like the PhD in the room. And you also have to ignore the fact that you're buying a four-door two plus two. If you want rear seat space in this chassis, though, your option is the Kia Stinger. Yeah, yeah. That's where you go. If you want all-wheel yeah. drive, and you want more seat space, and you want more storage, you go Kia Stinger. But that car feels bigger than this. I love the scale of this and how just Brilliant. agile and fun it feels in this market segment. I'm telling you, the best part about this is Mini AMG. It feels like yeah. discount AMG. Yeah. And that is no bad thing. That is high praise. This thing books. Yeah, it does. You're barely yeah. into it. I, I didn't try it all, and I got a, a number that's fairly large. Yeah. This thing books, and it sounds good while you're doing it. Highly recommend this to anybody. And you're, you're going to have to throw away the stigma. Kia Hyundai Genesis. Who cares? It's Who brilliant. Cares? Yeah. Oh, and by the way, you get that warranty. That You know those Hyundai warranties? Mm -hmm. They haven't stopped doing that. <laughs> and you still get a maintenance warranty for three years and 36,000 miles. Uh -huh. Free maintenance. Yep. That's luxury car kind of thinking. It is. Applied sure. to discount AMG. Mm -hmm. Mini Mercedes. That's what this is.